So hi everyone, I'm Liz Eggleston and I run Course Report, which is a resource for choosing the right bootcamp for you. So if you haven't used Course Report yet, then this is my one shameless plug. I do it in all of our videos. Uh, we have over 20,000 alumni reviews, tons of Q and A's with alumni and bootcamp instructors, um, research and videos like this one. So today I'm joined by Josie Artale who took the UX Design Bootcamp at Brain Station in Toronto. She graduated a couple of years ago. So thanks so much for being here, Josie. Hi, no problem, happy to be here. So recently I was just telling Josie, we've been highlighting a bunch of final projects because we get questions all the time about what you'll actually be able to build during a bootcamp, um, how far a bootcamp will get you, especially if you are a beginner when you start. And UX design projects are pretty unique as um, I'm sure we'll see from Josie's final project. So yeah, Josie graduated in uh, 2018 from Brain Station. She's now a UX designer at Marneau Chapelle, which we will talk about later. But I've got a lot of questions about the project that she worked on at Brain Station. Um, um, and how she kind of made the career change. So Josie, before we actually look at your project, I'm curious what you were doing before Brain Station. Like what is your kind of pre boot camp story? Yeah, so I guess I graduated as a woman studies student, um, which is kind of, people think it's a little uh, different for someone working in tech. Um, but what, it was such a great program and I learned a lot about how to conduct like research and um, just working with people and trying to understand their experiences and like where their pain points were and, and more of like some greater life problems, but it was still like such a great experience. And I was like, how, how do I like apply this in, in the real world? It felt like it was really like stuck in academia and not so much industry. Um, so then I graduated and I worked as an administrative assistant. Like I just needed a a job, but it was in tech. Um, and then I met some amazing UX designers um, and I learned about what UX was. Um, I liked design kind of, it was a skill that you kind of need as an admin, just it's, it, it helps and it helps you kind of go a long way or a bit further. Um, so I kind of connected with them and asked them um, and they're the ones that recommended BrainStation to me. Oh really? Oh, that's kind of amazing. Um, it's cool to have a, a suggestion like that uh, in your career. It's yeah, they were really helpful. They they allowed me to kind of like peek into what they were doing mm -hmm. at the company, like, even though it wasn't my job. They're like, hey, we're, we're doing this. Like, let's try to involve you any way we can. Um, and so that helped me learn about it. Um, and so that's why I, I kind of went with BrainStation and I was able to kind of keep learning through them as well. So, okay, so you got that recommendation from like real UX designers, which is a like great reason to go to a school. Um, but did you end up researching other UX boot camps or other kind of education options? Or did you have your heart set on BrainStation from the beginning? I, I looked into a few other ones, um, like in the Toronto area, like I, I read and the General Assembly were some other ones um, also online, but I did as much as I could just online learning, just reading and like courses. Mm -hmm. And then when I came to picking an actual school, it just, it, it sat well with me, I guess, compared to the, they all were great. I just yeah. the one that just kind of like went, went towards. Did yeah. you visit any of the classrooms before you signed up? Um, honestly, no, no, no. Yeah. I'm just wondering. Just kind of, I went off websites and just like general comments online. Um, and they, the guys had recommended like the other schools as well. And okay. it was kind of up to me. So, and was it hard to actually get into brain station? Did you have to do like a challenge or did it feel like competitive when you were applying? Um, not for me because I chose to do uh, the part-time programs mm -hmm. where I, so I took two part-time programs in the evening um, rather than the full-time one. Um, and I know for that you needed like a, a small like entry level piece of work. Um, but for me, I didn't. Cool. Okay. So you did the um, part-time. So which actual classes did you do? The part-time UX boot camp? Yeah, and the UI one. And the part-time UI. Oh, that's amazing. That's a, kind of a cool. So did you keep your job while you were doing BrainStation? 
Yeah, it was like I, yeah, because it was just, I was already working with people that were also teaching me. So mm -hmm. Brain Station really helped me um, kind of just learn the theoretical background behind what I was doing. That's really neat. Yeah. Um, so then once you got accepted and you started at those, at the, doing the part-time uh, boot camps. What was the learning experience like? I know this was a couple of years ago, so we don't have to get too like into the weeds on this. But what did the curriculum cover? Like, what did you actually learn at Brain Station? Yeah, um, it was it was great. Like, it was a small like, small classroom, so it was pretty like interactive. Um, and so we they really helped me with the UI design. Like, there are so much things about visual design that like they really taught me and helped me uh, like learn about. And um, just the kind of process, just like they broke down the process in a really great way. So you can really understand like this whole, like how to design a, a product from beginning, from idea to like fruition, yeah. And were you able to kind of work on projects at your like day job that corresponded to what you were learning? Um, at Brain Station or were they completely separate? Um, they were allowing, so I was doing like communication kind of design, so like email campaigns, um, some social media stuff, um, our customer support website. Um, so they let me practice on that um, and more so the visual design skills and then the Brain Station projects were really good opportunities for me to learn like how to design products. That's really smart to find places where you can apply what you're learning in the real world. Um, I know we're going to talk about some of your projects, but it's, it's cool that you could kind of like find places to work it in. Um, very smart. So what was the, who were your instructors while you were in both of those classes? Were they like real UX designers or UI yeah. designers? Yeah, they both worked at Connected Labs in Toronto. Um, I don't remember their last names, but Hillary and Liz, they were great. Um, Hillary uh, was a really great UX designer. She, or she is, uh, she focuses on voice design too, which was, I thought was really cool. And so she kind of like made me think about that route as well and, and that part of the user experience. Um, and then, uh, yeah, and Liz was really great with visual design and she really helped me learn a few cool tricks and sketch. And nice that they were both women, I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah, it was great. It's cool to like be transitioning into tech and have women in the classroom. It's always kind of a surprise and nice. Yeah, no, it, it was great. Um, um, so, okay, so you mentioned that you were kind of learning the design process. Uh, was that through projects? Like how do projects kind of factor into your, into the curriculum? Yeah, so we would do, like, we would have just, uh, like, slides and, and theor theoretical class. Um, but then we would basically take that in practice. So with our UX projects, it's starting with, like, defining what the problem was, right? And then once we come up with our problem, uh, coming up with some research, a hypothesis and research questions. And then from there, again, you continue into exploring them and conducting the research and then how to take those results. And basically broke it down amongst within the classes and we were able to work with our peers on our projects. So I would interview you for mine and vice versa. Also like throughout the week, you know, call your friends, ask people at work kind of thing. And so to try to, to really like build your product, design your product. That's really neat. I mean, if you're doing the boot camp part time, I think that can sometimes be a question that that people have about doing a part-time boot camp is if you're not in the classroom with people like, you know, 24 seven, can you work with in groups or work collaboratively? Like how did you end up working with your, with your, the other students in your class? Um, Slack, you know, Slack. Keep it, yeah, Slack is great communication tool. And then it's just about working the time into your schedule. Like that's to me what the selling feature is to a part-time program is that I'm not in school all day. I can kind of condense like my class hours, but just knowing that I have to spend a few hours each day or maybe a chunk on Saturday um, to do the, to do the work, it, like it, it works out. Um, and it also kind of challenges you to reach out to other people and to yeah. kind of, yeah. That is kind of a nice challenge. Um, okay, so you did a UX boot camp and a UI boot camp. Could you share your screen and show us uh, one of 
your projects from one of those? So the app was called TrackFit, and the idea of it was for you to track your fitness. Um, basically, um, I'm a bit of a run runner, I guess, and so when you kind of take that break in the winter time, and then you want to try to get back into like training again, sometimes there's a bit of a lull. Um, and so it was just kind of solving like the problem of like the having a fitness folder of fitness apps in your phone that a lot of uh, fitness enthusiasts usually have. And so that was kind of the research we conducted. And then we decided um, through that, that because it's such a broad genre or industry to pick one aspect of fitness and focus it and solve the problems within that, that kind of niche. So we went with the running niche. Um, and so this is an example of a home screen here, um, just kind of uses a simple tab navigation at the bottom. Um, and when you land at home, you have the option between uh, like a run program, a traditional workout, and your cool down. Um, so when you go to run, you can pick between like an open road, which would use your map, and then saying if you're running on a track, like you, at your park, or even at your gym. Um, so if you go with the map and the open road, you have this notification to use your location and notifications, um, and then it'll set kind of a, a route for you and it'll tell you like your distance and everything. Um, and then with the track, it's kind of the same thing. Um, and it has like a, the idea was it to kind of guide you through the running of the track, even if your phone's locked um, and it kind of breaks down your distances. Um, and then when you're finished, you get like a, um, a nice like reward. Cool. Um, yeah, and then the workouts and the cool downs was like, the idea was instead of ha you having to choose it, it's just kind of, on a, a shuffle um, for different kinds of workouts. Um, so it kind of runs through the video and same thing. Um, and then same thing with the cool downs. So you would be able to kind of do all of your, like your three parts of your daily workout and it, it's pre-programmed for you. And then you can also monitor it in your activity um, where you would have like just your, like your daily and you have like levels around your rings. So. It's a way of also tracking it. Um, and then you have a profile page as well where you have all your information, like your progress from your goal. There was a whole like um, first user experience flow where you kind of put your goals and where you're at and, and where you want to go. Um, and then some stats and like a little panel for your notifications. So yeah, that's basically what I built in my part-time program or in my program, yeah. It's beautiful. It's really well designed. Um, you. Did you work on it as a group or was this an individual project? It was an individual project. Yeah. It's pretty cool that you could get this much done um, on your own in, was this in the UX bootcamp or the UI? The UI one. The UI. Okay. And did you take that one second after the UX one? I took it actually kind of like simultaneously. Oh. Um, they over, like there's a bit of a, um, an overlap in principles because you really can't do a nice UI design without understanding like, the thinking behind it. Mm -hmm. um, but I focused a lot more on the UI of this one visually because it was, so I applied the skills on both, but. And how long did it take you to actually do this project? Oh, I, we had it finished within, I think I took a eight week, a 12 week. Mm -hmm. We had it within, it was done within that time frame. So you like work on the project throughout the course. So you're kind of like learning each design or each UI principle and like applying it to the project. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's really cool. That's actually a really neat way to learn something like UX design. I'm always curious when I talk to people who have like built, you know, done design projects, what that actually ends up looking like, because, you know, in a coding bootcamp, you're like building a project and deploying it and, you know, making yeah. it work. Um, but this is, uh, this is a little bit different. Um, and it looks like you used InDesign, am I right? Uh, to design this? For this one. So this one I built with Sketch and Envision. Okay. Oh, Envision. Okay, great. And it, like you were learning those tools at BrainStation? Yeah. Is there anything that you, this, it, I know you built this like two years ago, so this may be um, a bit of a reach, but is there anything that you learned while you were building the project that you 
didn't learn in the curriculum? Like, did you have to kind of step outside of the curriculum to build things? Um, yes and no, because they provided you the resources that, that you needed to learn more. Um, so they might have touched on uh, accessibility, for example. Um, and if you wanted to learn, like really dive into it, well, here's what you need to kind of make sure your product is, is accessible. Right. Um, cool. So, okay. So InVision and Sketch, um, and then looking back at this project, which you built a couple of years ago, I would say it still looks very modern and, and like really well designed, but how do you feel like you've grown as a UX designer since, or UI designer, um, since you built this project a couple of years ago? Yeah. Um, I would... So I would probably, looking back, I would, I would probably plan out some of like the UI components a little bit better now that I know more about working with design systems and um, how that kind of factors into everything. I think I would probably have started with that. Even though I did go from like a wireframe stage into this, um, that would probably be one, I'd probably a big one. And UX-wise, um, there, are, I guess now that I'm working, there are so many complicated situations sometimes in the product that you don't even predict and people don't even predict, even like just air, simple things like errors that could come up. Um, and so mapping those out, I think that's something I didn't know about. I was gonna ask if those are just things that you've learned like on the job and it sounds like they are, they kind of come with experience. Um, did you learn any, or have you taught yourself after, after graduating, um, any programming or did you learn like HTML, CSS, JavaScript at all during BrainStation? Not at BrainStation. I've always like, I don't, I, it's not my cup of tea to code. I've always tried, I've always taken like the beginner intro courses to it. I don't get myself very far. So I know the basics enough to understand and work with my developers, but to do the front end development, it's, it's just not my cup of tea. If I sat down and really focused, I, I could, but yeah, I just decided to go more with um, design, like research and more product strategies side of things rather than development. Yeah, that makes complete sense. I feel like what you were saying before about, you know, kind of understanding and maturing and understanding what's going to be when there are errors and what it means to actually build those projects. Like, um, it, you probably understand a little bit more about what's going on technically just having done this for the last two years, but you're saying you don't need to like actually learn to code in order to be a UX designer. No, that's I, totally I, fair. All right. If, if it's a skill set that you're really interested in, go for it. Mm -hmm. And, there are tons of designers that can code and enjoy it, but I, you don't have to at all, no. Okay, that's great to know. I feel like we hear that question all the time. Do I have to learn how to code to be a designer? Um, wonderful. Okay, so um, did you wanna show us like uh, some examples of things that you've built since graduating really quickly? And then I'd love to hear about what you're working on today. Okay, sure. Um, you still see my screen, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, so my portfolio, so for more notes, with where I work now, a lot of my work is under NDA, so if you were to click on my portfolio, um, you actually can't see anything, it's just being a little slow to load. Um, so one way I kind of keep my skills sharp, um, and also because I work on some enterprise-based products, it's, your creativity sometimes can, can kind of go a bit stagnant, so I always try to create something on the side, even if it's small, to really just reinforce some of the things I've always kind of learned or am currently learning. Um, so, uh, so yeah, that was the track fit. If you wanted to learn more, would be here. Um, so I'm gonna go with this one. Um, so yeah, so this is a, um, a, a idea that I came up with about product, um, like more like product strategy. Um, and so there's a bit of like the research here that comes behind it, like overlaps with the user persona, uh, creating personas to find your base character. Um, name your name. That thing was a idea 
where I realized a lot of kids like to bother the Google assistants because it came out like about a year ago or we kind of everyone had them and for the idea that the kids should be able to actually learn something from bothering Google all the time and kind of creating a game out of it. Um, and so I, you know, interviewed some parents and we kind of created some personas out of it. And then um, I created just a, a basic customer journey. Um, again, I just wanted to keep that skill set sharp and just kind of have fun with it. Like the game was called Name That Thing. It wasn't really a serious. Um, and then I just kind of also just did some product analysis and how we could kind of create it and sell it. Um, then I kind of created a conversation map um, just to map out a basic flow of what the game would be, just a question and answer, keep it short. Um, and then I tested it out actually um, with, a, with a little manuscript and actually and my niece and nephew who are, were re under five at the time and we played the game and it was a lot of fun. Um, and then I actually designed the UI for the chat interface, so I sketched it out. Um, then I created a bit of a style guide for it, just so I had some branding and typography. Um, now I was start at this point. I was actually starting to uh, work with design systems a bit more, so I was understanding different states and different parts and components that you need to consider when you're designing a product. Um, and then uh, this is like a whole you know, chat uh, example of the game. And, you know, like, so just name something that has sloppy ears, a long nose, and something called a trunk, and it's a, a an elephant. And cool. I feel like parents would love this. Yeah, it, it was a lot of fun to play and to, like, just kind of hang out with my niece and nephew. Um, but it was just an idea that I wanted to learn more about VUI, so. And VUI stands for voice user. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, that's really neat. And it's, I mean, it's amazing that you are kind of taking your, you know, continuous learning into your own hands, um, building this while you're also working at, you know, kind of your day to day job. Um, I feel like that is what makes you a better designer over time. Yeah, it's so, really neat. You have to just keep because you'll get like stuck in a in a rut kind of thing, and so just I don't spend a, a lot of time. I don't make it complicated. I just okay. I want to exercise this skill and kind of create something from there. Amazing! Those were two really cool projects. Appreciate you showing us like what you built during BrainStation and what you've built since then. Um, so uh, today you are a UX designer at Morneau Chappelle and you've been there for almost two years. So congratulations um, on making the actual career transition. Uh, without kind of, you know, violating your NDA, can you tell us uh, what Morneau Chappelle does and, and what your role there is? Yeah, so um, Orno Chappelle, uh, we are like an HR tech company. Um, we do a lot, of, uh, I work in uh, the benefit and, and health and well, wellness kind of uh, line of business. So there's like, what, there's a bit like absent management systems and payroll and pensions and like they, it's pretty much like HR, um, HR administration. Um, so since I've been there, I've done a app redesign. It's, it's available on um, like iTunes and I mean, App Store, sorry. Um, it's called My Plans Connect and it allows you to just view your benefit enrollment details, like your, your retirement savings, your pension, stuff like that. Um, and that was a redesign project that I got basically my first, as soon as I got there, um, which was really good. And uh, now I'm working on like an enrollment tool. So how to pick your benefits and making sure that people are kind of understanding the choices that they're making. Uh, that's a really intense first project to get assigned. Yeah. But also I can imagine that UX design and UI design, user research, everything that you learned in, in a UX bootcamp would be so important for an HR, like for an HR suite of tools it's all about getting people to actually use it and sign up and like stay on top of it, yeah. um, which is not easy. Yeah. I think the biggest challenge is to getting people to understand just 
like the decisions that they're making and just because they these older like a lot of older software systems that we're redesigning just didn't focus on things like the ux writing um and some just small interaction things so those those updates that that focus on ux will kind of improve that and how did you actually get the job after brain station was it through a connection with the school or do the part-time courses at brain station even like focus on kind of career and outcomes? Um, actually, no, my boss just messaged me on LinkedIn. He was looking for designers and they, they had, they usually work with a recruitment agency and he wasn't happy with the selection and he actually wanted to hire bootcamp grads because he was looking for people who I guess had been working towards a goal and this is what they really wanted to do. And so he uh, interviewed me and uh, another girl that I was working with um, for that same, just that reason. So I guess you, if you were reached out to by your employer on LinkedIn, then um, you may not have had to do like a super intense job search. But do you have any advice for people who are, you know, just about to graduate from a boot camp or who have graduated from a boot camp and are looking for that first job in UX design? Yeah, no, of course. I mean, I had applied to like, I don't know how many jobs and like cried about the rejection letters kind of thing. You know, like it, it did take some time and, um, and, and I just like, uh, some of it is make sure your LinkedIn profile is on open to recruiters. I know sometimes it gets annoying, but literally one recruiter could change your life if you meet the right person. So that's something I always say, and I say to, it's all about transferable skills. So if you know something about an industry or there's a certain skill set that you're really strong in, to look for companies that are looking for that or are looking for that feature in you and to just really go for it. And that's it. That's really good advice. Practical but like fantastic advice. Um, so um, when you kind of think about the career transition that you went through, you know, a couple of years ago and going through the boot camp and kind of applying that at your, at your old job, um, is, is the job now what you expected? Like, is this what you kind of expected as a, as a UX designer? Are you kind of happy with your, your career change? Yeah, uh, I love my job. Like, I, I'm happy with this that I went with this. It was something that was able to co like combine my love for creative work and like also like my love for research. And so I thought it was great. Um, there, it's more technical than I probably had expected it to be. But that those are things that if you're open to just learning about them on the job, it just more knowledge in your pocket kind of thing. Um, and you learn as, that stuff as you go. Yeah, it sounds like you've been good at learning as you go. Um, do you feel like in the last couple of years that you've grown kind of into a, well, has your, has your actual job title changed? Like, have you gone from associate to? I went from a contract because they had not, they weren't sure about actually hiring a girl that doesn't code, but knew how to design things. Um, and to, uh, yeah, we'll hire you permanent full time. So that's, that was what kind of what happened. Um, and I've grown in terms of now that I'm more knowledgeable about the projects I'm on, um, and the products I work with, I kind of share that with like new designers that, that come on as we kind of grow. That's nice. You like become a mentor to new designers. Yeah, and they teach me things too because, like my, like I always say, my visual UI was not my first, like background, like first love and everything. And so there are some great designers that come in there, and they teach me so much every day. I imagine that just in the last two years, the amount of change in the design landscape, like, is probably mm -hmm. massive. Um, so it's probably nice to have new, new folks starting because they. Yeah know the most uh most updated technologies um so i guess just kind of to start wrapping up um when you think back on the last two years do you feel like uh the two part-time brain station boot camps prepared you for the job that you have now or do you think that you could have you know 
two years ago stayed at your at your current job and kind of kept teaching yourself and gotten the job that you have today? Um, honestly, I don't think so. I think I, you needed that, or I at least needed that formal, like that formal training, the somewhere to go, someone to hold you accountable, um, to interact with you, to teach you things that you wouldn't learn from the internet because that's just the truth of it. There are things that the internet can't teach you um, that other people can teach you and you will hold on to for, for, more, for longer. And you mentioned that the job is more technical maybe than you originally thought, um, but are there any other challenges or like what was the biggest roadblock or challenge that you faced in the last couple of years in making this career change? Um, I think a lot of it is literally just having to teach myself things to keep up. Like it didn't stop when I, when I was done school, um, it stopped for a little bit and then you have to learn something new or you, you get put on a new project or you have a new feature and you have to, you have to learn more about it. You have to learn how, like how it would work. And, and that just, I think comes with time. Definitely. Okay. So last question I asked this to everyone. Um, anything you would tell a friend who is going to start tomorrow? Um, just go for it. Yeah, go all in. Like, enjoy it because it's a great thing to learn. All right. Well, then I think that that is the perfect place to end. Um, so thanks so much to Josie for showing off your final project and a couple projects that you've done since graduating telling us all about what a UX designer's kind of work day is like. Uh, we will post a recording and a transcript of this uh, Q&A on our blog soon, and we'll include information about Brain Station, which is the boot camp that Josie graduated from. So thanks so much to all of you for joining and tuning in. Tweet at us, email us, let us know what topic you'd like to see covered on the next Core Support webinar. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.